All right, here are solutions for quiz, not one, quiz two uh, for Math 251. Uh, you're given this graph right here, a graph of some function f, and you're asked to determine the following limits, or state that they're undefined, if that's the case. So in A here, you're asked to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the negative side. So here's negative 2 right here, um, but since we want the limit as we approach from the negative side, we're thinking about a guy walking up this way, and what height is he approaching, and it looks like the height would be 3. So that's equal to 3 right there. What about approaching negative 8 from the positive side? Well, here's negative 8 right here. If I'm coming in from the positive side, I'm coming in this way. And the height right here appears to be approaching, what's that, negative 6? Uh, what about the limit as x approaches negative 8, period? doesn't tell you from the positive or the negative side. Well, the idea there is if it doesn't tell you the positive or the negative side, you consider it as two separate problems. So you look at it from the positive side. We already got that that's negative 6. And then you look at it from the negative side. From the negative side, it looks like we're also approaching negative 6. And if the two one-sided limits are equal, then the two-sided limit, the thing that's being asked here, is also equal to that number. So negative 6 would be my answer here, not negative 3. f of negative 8 would be equal to negative 3, but that's not what's being asked here. What about the limit as x approaches 6 from the negative side? Here's 6 from the negative side. I'm coming this way. The height is getting close to 2. So that would be the answer. And what about the limit as x approaches 6, period? Well, now what i got to do is think about from the negative side, the height was 2. But from the positive side, the height would be approaching 5. And since 2 and 5 are different, this limit does not exist. Or DNE, or N, or none, or whatever. Um, and that's all I got for this one. Not a whole lot of work you can show other than, you know, I've been sketching stick figures and stuff in class. But I think we'll just leave it like that and move on. Uh, these problems, quite a bit more work to do on these ones. You're asked to evaluate these limits algebraically. Uh, so what we're going to do is try to evaluate the limit by changing all the x's into 2's, but what you'll see what happens in that case is you get 0 over 0. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is get rid of this x minus 2 because I can't divide by 0. So I'll say that this is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of... Um, and if there's this x minus 2 that has to go away, there must be a factor of x minus 2 up in the numerator. Uh, so I could just factor the numerator, or I could get kind of clever about it and know that there must be an x minus 2 in there to cancel with this x minus 2 if I ask you to evaluate this limit. Uh, and then the other term here is easier to figure out. If I ended up with a 3x squared, and there's an x here, there must be a 3x over here. If I ended up with a positive 4, there must have been a minus 2 here, because minus 2 times minus 2 would give me positive 4. And you can check your answer if you're so inclined. Here's the negative 6x here, and then here's negative 2 more x. So that makes this negative 8x here. So this is equal to this, period. Um, but this is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x minus 2. In other words, you can cancel out these x minus 2s, but only if you write limit in here. If you don't write the limits in here, this is not equal to this. Um, so this is, that's what I was getting at when I said properly indicate limits. Make sure you write it right here. The limit as x approaches 2 of 3x minus 2, well, that's easy to evaluate. All i got to do is change all the x's into 2's. So 3 times 2 minus 2, a.k.a. what, 4, 6 minus 2? So the answer would be 4. Oh, what about this one here? There's kind of, I guess there's four types, but I told you these would be the three, or I don't know if I'm going to tell you this in class or not. Here's three of the four types. The only type that we talked about that's missing is the absolute value type. Um, but this type, when you have fractions inside fractions, so the limit as x approaches negative 3, you can try plugging them in, but you'll see you get 0 over 0 again, as is always the case in these type of problems. So I have to figure out a way to get rid of this x plus 3. There must be an x plus 3 hidden up here somewhere in the numerator. And the way I'm going to get to that x plus 3 is, first I'm going to get a common denominator. So I'm going to say this is 3x. Maybe I'll even write it right here, save myself a step. I'll multiply by 3 over 3 on this side and x over x on this side. So really what I get is 6 over x plus 2, sorry, 6x over 3x plus 2x over 3x. I get 6 plus 2x divided by 3x up in the numerator. And in the denominator, I got this x plus 3, but I could write that as x plus 3 over 1 if I felt like it, because now it looks like a fraction divided by a fraction. So I can say that this is the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 6 plus 2x, which I'm going to write a little bit differently. I'm going to factor out a 2 from that. And then I got, what, 3 plus x, which I could write as x plus 3, but I'm going to leave it as 3 plus x for now, so I'm not doing too many steps in one. So here's this 6 plus 2x and then the 3x down on the bottom. 
And then instead of thinking about that as dividing by this, I'm going to think about it as multiplying by 1 over x plus 3. And now, now maybe you can see why I factored that 2 out so that I'd be able to cancel out those x plus 3s. I got the limit as x approaches negative 3 of, and the numerator, if this is gone, I just have a 2 times a 1, aka a 2. And if this canceled with this, all that's left in the denominator is 3x. And this is a limit I can evaluate. I can change all the x's into negative 3s. I'll get 2 over 3 times negative 3, or negative 2 ninths. That should be my answer. Then I can move down to this type, the radical type. The trick that we learned in class for these is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of, in this case, the numerator, wherever your radical is. So what I'm saying is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 9 minus x, and then instead of plus 3, I'm going to put a minus 3 in here. And I'm going to do that same thing down on the bottom. That's going to be a disaster down on the bottom. Don't worry, we're not really going to do a whole lot with it. We'll kind of just let it hang out throughout the problem. Uh, but what I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by this, so I get that this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches 5. And maybe I should have made the point that you can try changing all the x's into 5 from the get-go, but this would be 0. And in fact, this would be as well, because 9 minus 5 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Wait a minute, that wouldn't be 0. Uh, I better change this. All right, on this third problem, I'm actually going to change it a little bit. I'm going to make it the square root of 9 minus x and then minus 2. So I'll fix that so you don't see it all squiggly when I give you this test. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I want it to be this 0 over 0 type, this whole type, because those will be the ones that are useful to us later in this class. And so I want it to be the case that when you change all the x's into 5, you get 0 over 0. And note that that happens in the denominator, and now that happens in the numerator too, because 9 minus 5 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 minus 2 gives you that 0. So anyways, you have this type, and as we learned in class, there's a trick for this type. Specifically, what I'm going to do is get rid of this radical by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the numerator in this case. So instead of the square root of 9 minus x minus 2, I'm going to make it the square root of 9 minus x plus 2. I'm going to multiply that in the numerator and the denominator. And if I actually foiled it out in the denominator, it would be kind of a mess, but it turns out that I can just kind of leave that throughout the problem, and I'll show you what I mean as I go. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 5 of. Nice thing happens when you multiply by the conjugate. Square root of 9 minus x times the square root of 9 minus x is equal to 9 minus x. The square root of 9 minus x times positive 2 is equal to 2 times the square root of 9 minus x, but the square root of 9 minus x times negative 2 is equal to that same thing except for negative. So what I'm saying is the O and the I in FOIL will cancel each other out. And so all I'll have left it will be minus 2 times positive 2, a.k.a. minus 4 here. And then the denominator, you could go through and FOIL this all out, but you don't want to because you're trying to get rid of this x minus 5. And if you go and uh, distribute, multiply this all through, you'll lose this x minus 5. It'll be hidden in there. It'll be hard for you to cancel. So the trick, as we learned in class, is to leave that as x minus 5 and then leave this as the square root of 9 minus x plus 2. And so you know this is the one that's got to go away, this x minus 5. So there must be an x minus 5 up in the numerator there. There is, it's just hard to see. Uh, let's see, 9 minus 4 gives me positive 5. So I got negative x plus 5, which is almost what I want. It's the negative of what I want. So I can pull out a negative, and then what I would have left would be the x minus 5 in the numerator. And I still got this x minus 5 sitting there just waiting patiently for me to cancel it out. So I'm here. And now I can cancel out those x minus 5s. And what I get is that this is equal to the limit as x approaches 5 of negative 1 over the square root of 9 minus x minus 2. And I can evaluate that by changing all the x's into 5s. I get negative 1 divided by the square root of 4 minus 2. Oops, I mean plus 2, sorry. Uh, that would have been 0, which would have been bad. And I was, so I paused the video, like, where the hell did I screw up? This was a plus 2. This was a plus 2. For some reason, I wrote minus here instead of plus. So that should have been a plus. And when I cancel those out, that would make this a plus. And then I'll have the square root of 4 plus 2, which is negative 1 over 2 plus 2, a.k.a. negative 1 quarter. Probably should go back and make a new video where I don't screw up, but I'm not going to. So there you go. I screw up sometimes.
Uh, but I fixed it here. These would be the answers, and I guess I will end this video here.